Hello and welcome to this edition of Reporters on France 24, the weekly magazine featuring in-depth stories from correspondents around the world. I'm Andrea Sankey. Tonight, Armenian identity in Turkey, or perhaps better said, a lack of identity. Millions are believed to have been exterminated by Turkish authorities in the early 20th century. But the Armenian genocide is something Turkish officials have consistently denied despite constant foreign pressure. That denial has made it difficult for Armenians to be Armenian in Turkey. Many fear discrimination if they reveal their Christian roots, and some are even discovering their Armenian heritage has been kept from them for most of their lives. They are known as hidden Armenians, and here now are some of their stories. It's a true story, a secret that this old woman kept throughout her life and revealed to her granddaughter before dying. Where in 1915 the genocide is taking place, Armenian men from the village have been rounded up. Mm -hmm. The women, the elderly and the children begin a long march toward death. Many of them die on the way. Some Muslim families want to take the young children. My great-grandmother doesn't want to give up her daughter. But her aunt and her mother push her to do it. We're all going to die. Give your children. At least they will survive, they tell her. Sergeant Hussain is keeping watch on the convoy. He doesn't have children, so he forcibly grabs his little nine-year-old girl, my grandmother. The life of the little Armenian, Haranis, changes radically. She's given a new name, Saya. She forgets her religion and her mother tongue. She becomes a young Muslim. At 15, she's married to my grandfather. Fatiye is shocked. The story her grandmother tells her is in complete contradiction with the official Turkish history, which denies the Armenian genocide. At first, I rebelled because we were lied to, and I wanted to shout it in the street. The state had never told us any of this. We behaved as if this page of history had never happened. Fatiha Satin then decides to write her grandmother's story. But her book tackles a major taboo since it questions the Muslim identity of the Turkish nation. In the past few years, numerous Turks have discovered that they are hidden Armenians. Their Muslim family has Christian ancestors rescued from the genocide who had to convert to Islam in order to survive. Allowing Turks to rediscover their Armenian roots was the obsession of journalist Rant Dink, assassinated for having shaken the myth of Turkish identity. The Egos team continues the work of its founder and publishes appeals by people who have discovered their Armenian ancestry and want to find out more. Here's a man who's discovered that his grandfather was Armenian. He's looking for distant cousins who might be among the Lebanese diaspora or in the United States. That's why he's publishing an ad in our newspaper. In Turkey, to call someone an Armenian is almost an insult. For some Turks, it's therefore out of the question to reveal they have Armenian ancestors in their family. These people are awaking brutally from a long sleep. They learn something that's very important to them. On a personal level, it's not easy to accept that one has Armenian blood. It can be terrible for a man who's always presented himself as a Turk and Muslim to reveal his Christian Armenian roots. He can lose his social status and put his life in danger. At the entrance of Rant Dink's newspaper, Armenian sympathizers demand to know the truth about his assassins, nationalists close to the police. We saw that the police and the gendarmerie treated the assassins like heroes, and we learned that the murderers had linked with the police. Security forces are deployed, policemen in civilian clothes film each of the demonstrators. Armenian sympathizers are always subject to pressure and intimidation. Turkey is not yet capable of hearing the truth about its Armenian past. For centuries, Armenians, from father to son, have been doing silver metal work. They know that being Armenian in Turkey is not easy. They therefore understand the disarray felt by Turks who suddenly discover their Armenian roots.
I was born an Armenian. I therefore never had a choice. But those who discover an Armenian ancestor all of a sudden feel disoriented. I'm thinking, for example, of a friend who learned from Agos newspaper that the village he came from, a village he thought Turkish and Muslim, used to be 80% Armenian. He spoke to his father and, surprise, his father admitted that yes, his grandmother was Armenian. Other hidden Armenians are those who know they are Armenian but practice Islam. I know a lot of Armenians whose families converted to Islam to be accepted by the community. When some of them migrate to the city, to Istanbul, they feel freer and want to rediscover their Christian identity. They become Armenians again. This is Sadiq's story, another story based on secret. Sadiq has known for a long time that he and his relatives are Armenians, but in the village his family has chosen to keep a low profile. I was born in a Christian family. My father and my mother are Armenians, but in our village, my brother and my mother hide their religion. They do not want to attract attention. It is only when I arrived in Istanbul that I first set foot in a church. When I was a child, I was sent to a boarding school away from the village. There, the other children used to make fun of me and call me an infidel. When I came back to the village for the holidays, I asked my father, why are my friends calling me an infidel? I have no defect. I'm not cross-eyed. What does it mean? I was so insistent that my father eventually confessed. Listen, he told me, we're Armenians. Maybe some of them suspect it, but we have to remain discreet. For everyone, we are Kurds and Muslims. That's all. We won't mention it again. Since he has settled in Istanbul, Sadiq is no longer in hiding. Quite the opposite. I went to Armenia and I met my wife and got married there. We have given a Christian name to our son. He is called Christopher. He attends a private school where he speaks Armenian and Turkish. And now I'm learning Armenian thanks to my son. We travel with Sadiq to his village, 2,000 kilometers away from Istanbul, where his mother and brothers still live. Before the genocide, there were at least a million Armenians living in southeast Turkey. They possessed their own land and villages. They prayed in their churches and were buried in their own cemeteries. Today, these regions are only populated by Kurds and Turks. Of the millennia-old Armenian presence, almost nothing remains. Armenian names have been erased from the map if not the village itself. Here there was an Armenian village. Today this place has a Turkish name, but it's not its original name. For a long time you could still see old damaged houses. Today there's almost nothing left. The stones have been carried away, the place is entirely empty. Look at this mosque. It's in fact an old Armenian church. The minaret was built and added recently. Before we arrive, Sadiq first wants to visit the Muslim cemetery where his father is buried. When we were children, we used to see our father cross himself and pray to Jesus Christ, but we didn't know what it meant. When he died in 1982, there was neither church nor priest here, so we buried him according to Muslim tradition. The tomb is made of marble, a sign of wealth that must fuel the villagers' envy. There was a rumor that an infidel was buried in the cemetery. People were concerned that the presence of this infidel would harm the soul of their own dead. They therefore destroyed the stone that carried my father's name. If we replaced it, it would be broken again. Sadiq's family lives on land that was already in the possession of their Armenian ancestor, an Ottoman dignitary. It was only in 2000, at the end of a long trial, that the family was able to reclaim all the fields confiscated during the 1915 genocide. Sadiq's brothers and their wives look like the local Kurdish peasants. They don't speak Armenian, but Kurdish and Turkish. <laughs> 